students welcome to today's lecture we have started our topic from bio 1 that is paper first and the name of the topic is the cell unit of life here in our previous lecture we have discussed that cell is a structural and functional unit of life and in that we have completed the part of the prokaryotic cell then in our next lecture we have seen that there are different structure formed in the eukaryotic cell and from that we have completed one part that is the cell wall of the eukaryotic cell and we have also seen the diagram of the prokaryotic cell and of the eukaryotic cell and in that we have seen the diagram of the animal cell so student you have to prepare the diagram of the plant cell okay from our textbook and if you have any uh, query about that diagram you can immediately contact me so here i am not going to draw the diagram of the plant cell you have to draw it from the your textbook we have already drawn the diagrams of the prokaryotic cell that is the bacterial cell and of the animal cell so in today's lecture we are going to discuss the second part of the eukaryotic cell and that is called as the cell membrane in nct the title is given as the cell membrane so what is mean by cell membrane cell membrane which is also called as the plasma membrane or it is also called as the plasma membrane okay so here we are now going to discuss the another covering of the plant and the animal cell that is called as the cell membrane because in the cell wall we have seen that it is found only in a plant and the fungi this cell wall is absent in the animal cell but the cell membrane or which we call as a plasma membrane or the plasma lemma is present only in the it is not present only but it is found in animal as well as in plant but it is outermost covering of the animal cell okay so here what we have to discuss about this cell membrane so listen carefully this whole lecture okay which points are very important for me point of view that we will discuss simultaneously during this lecture so pay attention here and we will discuss this cell membrane which is a very important part for me point of view detailed structure of this cell membrane can be possible only after the discovery of the electron microscope okay electron microscope can carry detailed study of this cell membrane and it is can be studied very clearly on the rbc that is called as the red blood cells so detailed study of the cell membrane is carried out on one of the cell and the name of that cell is called as the rbc red blood cells which is one of the important component of our blood which gives red color to our blood that's why we call as a red blood cell or the hemoglobin which is called as a respiratory pigment is present in it that's why it is very important part of our cell so this rbc was collected or was isolated and on that the detailed structure of the cell membrane can be carried out now the question is that here this cell membrane or the plasma membrane if we see the composition of it then what is its composition so this cell membrane or is made up of two important component and those components are called as the lipid and protein it is made up of lipid and protein first we will focus on the lipid component of this cell membrane okay cell membrane is made up of lipid and protein but we will focus first on the lipid part of the cell membrane see here everyone is known that there are number of macromolecules like protein carbohydrate lipids okay which are very essential for our growth for our development so in day to day life or in our regular diet we can take this lipid proteins carbohydrates in our food okay so lipid 
is a component which is called as a macromolecule which has an oily or greasy consistency. This lipid molecule or the major type of lipid which is present in the cell membrane and that is called as the phospholipid. That is called as the phospholipid. Okay. So very very important point that we have to remember is which is the major type of lipid present in the cell membrane? It is of the phospholipid. Okay, so if we see the structure of this phospholipid, before that you should know that there are three types of lipid. There are three types of lipid, which are those type triglycerides, phospholipid, and sterols. These are the three types of lipid. Out of these three types, the major lipid which is present in the cell membrane is the phospholipid. And if we see the structure of phospholipid, then you will find that the structure is like this. That is, this part is called as the head part and this part is called as the tail part. Okay? Head part is called as polar part and tail part is called as the non-polar part. Okay? Here, we have sketched the diagram of the phospholipid okay and in that we have shown that this phospholipid molecule has two parts rounded part is called as head part and there are two side by side chains are called as a tail part but the important thing that you have to remember is that head part is called as polar and the tail part is called as the non-polar. You know, what is mean by polar and non-polar? Okay, so here we have to remember that in the head part of the phospholipid there is a negatively charged phosphate group. Here there is a negatively charged phosphate group which makes the head polar one. Okay, where there is no any charge particle present here it is uncharged so it is called as a non-polar which is a tail part okay so polar means negatively charged phosphor group is there which makes the hair polar while uncharged particle present in tail part which make it a non-polar okay another important thing that you have to remember is that this head part is called as hydrophilic while this tail part is called as hydrophobic. Now, what is mean by hydrophilic and hydrophobic? Philic means living and phobic means hating. Okay, so hydro means water. Hair part or polar part of the phospholipid is water living. It gets attracted towards the water. That's why it is called as hydrophilic. While tail part is always away from water. It is water heating and that's why it is called as hydrophobic. So here we have to see that this lipid molecule which is mainly of phospholipid it is always present in the form of bilayer in a cell membrane. And how is this present? See here. I will draw here the bilayer. So you can see that this is the phospholipid element in a cell membrane that we call as a bilayer. And how this bilayer get arranged? It is arranged that head part of the phospholipid is facing towards the outer side where the aqueous environment is there, where water content is there. That's why this head part we call it as a hydrophilic because this head part of the liquid is always in contact with the water content which is present outside it. While the tail part that we have called it as a hydrophobic, it always away from water and here no water content is there and that's how this tail part is present away from the set waste environment. And how the arrangement is there? Tail parts are facing towards each other while tail part is placed at the outer side and such an element of the lipid molecule is called as the lipid bilayer element. It is called as the lipid bilayer element. Okay. Now here you have to remember 
two important thing is that important component of cell membrane is phospholipid. Its element in the cell membrane is in the form of bilayer. How the bilayer get arranged? The head part of phospholipid is facing towards the outer side, towards the aqueous environment. While the tail part is facing towards each other away from the aqueous environment. Okay. Other than what you have to remember, that is the hair part has a polar end, which is hydrophilic end. While the tail part is called as non-polar end, which is the hydrophobic end. Okay. So it is very important that you have to remember head is polar, hydrophilic, tail is non-polar, hydrophobic. So only one point you can remember, another point ultimately you can identify, okay? Now, the next thing is that, here, the another more thing that we have to remember, which is not given in NSAT, is that the head part contains negatively charged phosphor group and the tail part has uncharged group and that's why tail is non-polar and head is polar. Now, again one thing is given is that, their biochemistry is given here, this tail part that we call it as a non-polar, we call it as a hydrophobic, is made up of saturated hydrocarbon. It is made up of saturated hydrocarbon. It is a part of the chemistry, but here you should know, if we see the chemical structure of this tail part of the in, uh, lipid molecule then you will, you will find that the structure is like this okay so this is called as a saturated hydrocarbon what is hydrocarbon the carbon the chain which is made up of carbon and hydrogen that we call as a hydrocarbon chain which is made up of carbon and hydrogen is called as hydrocarbon and what is the meaning of saturated hydrocarbon when there is a single bond when there is a single bond in between the carbon then it is called as the saturated hydrocarbon and when there are more than one bond two or three bonds are present two or three bonds are present in between the carbon then it is called as the unsaturated hydrocarbon so here the carbons which has a single bond in between them that's what is called as saturated hydrocarbon such a type of chemical arrangement you can observe in the tail region and this point is given in NCRT book so it may be asked for the mid point of view that is the chemical nature of the tail of the first polypore is that it is made up of saturated hydrocarbon okay and it is a non-polar part it is the hydrophobic part of the cell membrane okay here i think you get it very well now here the next point is that next to this structure first polypid we have to see that how this lipid is arranged Now, after the phospholipid, that we have seen that phospholipid is the main component of the cell membrane. It is also found that one more component of the lipid which is present in the cell membrane and that is called as the cholesterol. So, cholesterol, we, you have seen it number of times or you have heard the name of cholesterol which is present in our body so this cholesterol is the example of the lipid sterols okay so next to phospholipid cholesterol is also present in the cell membrane okay and later investigation of the cell membrane also state that other than lipids there are also present the carbohydrates so if we see the whole composition of the cell membrane, okay, then what you will find in the cell membrane, you can find the proteins, you can find liquids, 
and we can find also the carbohydrates. Okay, so lipids are present, proteins are present, and carbohydrates are also present in the cell membrane. Okay, and here from today's lecture, okay, see carefully from today's lecture with this video, I am going to give you the 10 MCQ daily for your homework. Okay, and from that, you can easily understand the concept of that particular lecture. So, see here, there are a number of questions are asked on the chemical composition of the cell membrane but here you have to know that in the cell membrane proteins, lipids and carbohydrates are present. Prot uh, lipids are present which two types of lipids are there? Phospholipids are there, cholesterol is there. Okay, This one we have not discussed it but lipid components are phospholipid lipid components are cholesterol and one more component is given in NCRT from this lipid molecule that is called as a phosphoglycerin. Confused, okay. Here I have made a box to it. Don't get confused, you have to focus only on this part phosphoglycerin, phospholipid, and cholesterol. All are the components of lipid which are present in the cell membrane. Only you have to remember this much part because whatever question is asked on this lipid part, answer will be definitely phosphoglycerin phospholipid and cholesterol which are the parts of the lipid. Clear? Now, what we have seen that later investigation of the cell membrane shows that along with lipid there are two important components present and those are called as protein and the carbohydrate. So protein and carbohydrates are also present in the cell membrane. Okay. So if the question is asked that what is the composition of cell membrane, then cell membrane has protein, lipid and the carbohydrates. What is the composition of lipid? Lipid contain all these components. Okay. Now the important thing here is that here you can see that if there is a percentage, you can observe the percentage of particularly lipid and protein, it is variable. It is variable if in we will see the human rbc okay human rbc and you will observe that in the human rbc 52 percent is of the protein and 40 percent is of the lipid so composition of this lipid or protein which is present majority in the cell membrane gets variable okay if we study the human RBC, then you will find that 52% is percentage of the protein and 40% is the lipid present in that particular RBC. Here, now, here, you can also observe that the protein part that we have mentioned, which is present in this lipid bilayer, and it is of the two types. One type of proteins are called as the peripheral proteins and another type of proteins are called as the integral proteins. Peripheral, periphery on the surface, okay, any protein which is present on the surface that we call as a peripheral protein and when this protein is present inside the cell membrane then we call it as a integral protein okay what is the peripheral integral protein that we see in our diagram now but here you should know the two types of protein which are present in the cell membrane if they ask for mid exam those are the peripheral proteins and the integral proteins those are the peripheral proteins and the integral proteins okay now here we we'll observe the structure of the cell membrane which is given by the scientist Singer and Nicholson. Okay, we'll revise all this point at the last, but see here, these are the types of lipid which is present in the cell membrane. 
These are the types of proteins which is present in the cell membrane. This component carbohydrate which is present in the cell membrane. The percentage of the proteins and lipids is variable in cell membrane. For example, is given of the human RNAC. Now, here we will see the detailed structure of cell membrane with the help of one model. That model is called as Schwer mosaic model, which is given by scientist Singer and Nicholson. Okay, so here we will discuss the next part of the cell membrane, and that is nothing but the model of the cell membrane. That model is called as fluid mosaic model. That model is called as fluid mosaic model. of the fluid mosaic model because we all know such a time to draw it carefully but you can get idea about this diagram about this model okay so here this is the liquid molecule that we are label it as a phospholipid okay and now you can observe that there will be are given there. Okay, so student, see here, we have sketched the diagram of the fluid mosaic model. Okay, so in the scientist we have to remember that is singular. And Nichols, sir, this is the fluid diagram of Fluid mosaic model. Hmm? Okay, this is the diagram of fluid mosaic model it was given by scientist Singer and Nicholson. According to him, see here, it is a lipid bilayer. Okay, we have already seen the structure of the lipid molecule, head part and the tail part. These proteins are called as integral proteins okay this is called as sugar that means it is an example of carbohydrate okay sugar this is a part of protein they are present at the periphery okay so these are the type of peripheral protein. The name clearly is not given in any study, but you should know it is a peripheral protein. Okay? And this part is called as the polystyrene. For mid point of view, you have to not draw the diagram, but you should know that is it is a fluid mosaic model given by the scientist Singer and Nicholson. And if the question is also asked on the 
diagram for mid point of view and there the diagram is given and you have to identify the correct labeling that is it is a protein molecule which is a type of peripheral protein it is a protein molecule which is type of the integral protein now here these are the cholesterol which is present in between the lipid bilayer here this is the lipid bilayer okay this is a sugar component of the Pluremosaic model. So here you have to identify correct labeling of the different part for the mid exam. So you have to study this pluremosaic model very carefully to understand the structure of it because this pluremosaic model have explained the detailed structure of this cell membrane. Okay, here I have just sketched the pluremosaic model. So students, what is important here, that is, integral means the protein which can completely present inside liquid barrier. So it is an integral protein. And the protein which are present on the surface of liquid barrier is called as a peripheral protein. So you have to remember the types of protein, integral and the peripheral proteins. Cholesterol is also there in the fluid mosaic model. Carbohydrate in the form of sugar is also there in the fluid mosaic model. And if you see the structure of this lipid barrier, then you can easily identify that head part are in contact with the aqueous environment, while the tail part is away from the aqueous environment. Okay? So you, this part is called as a non-polar part. And here, this part is called as a polar part of the liquid molecule. Okay. Now, here we have completed the structure of the cell membrane. Okay. Now, we have to study the functions of the cell membrane. It is also an important part. That is, which different type of functions are carried out by the cell membrane. Okay. So, here now, don't get confused. Fluid mosaic model only states that how the arrangement of protein, carbohydrate, and lipids are there in that model. And according to which, we can see that this model, one more thing is that here, this fluid mosaic model of the single and Nicholson is, but the nature of it is a quasi fluid. Then, what is mean by quasi? Quasi means semi partial that means quasi fluid means it is not of in the form of complete fluid but it is in the form of semi solid quasi fluid is nature quasi fluid means it is in the form of semi solid like the gel all of you know that is a gel gel is not completely liquid not completely solid okay it is a semi solid like that the nature of the fluid mosaic model is a semi solid okay so it is very important that quasi fluid nature that means it is in the form of semi solid form okay and such a nature of this liquid barrier which we call as a quasi fluid allows the lateral movement of protein in it that means the proteins which are present in this lipid bilayer may be integral protein or may be peripheral proteins. They move laterally. They move laterally in this lipid bilayer because lipid bilayer's nature is the quasi fluid. So quasi fluid nature or semi solid nature of the lipid molecule allows allows the protein molecule to move inside it. It is very very important. Okay, and the any molecule which can move from the lipid barrier, which is called as its fluidity. The movement of any molecule, maybe ion, maybe any uh, substances, maybe in the form of solid or liquid form, the movement of any substances from this lipid barrier is measured in terms of its fluidity. How can it move from this lipid barrier is called as fluidity of that substances. Okay, so this is the next one. Now, here we have completed the structure of cell membrane. You have to not go in detail. The fluid mosaic model, only the important thing that you have to remember that quasi fluid nature of the lipid is there in the fluid mosaic model, which allows the lateral movement of the protein and movement of any molecule in the lipid is called as its fluidity. Okay, 
and here we have seen the components present in this cell membrane. Now we'll focus on the functions of this cell membrane. function of the cell membrane is the transport of molecules across it. So see here, you will see, this is the cell membrane. Then this cell membrane is a passage or the way to which molecules get transported okay so transport of molecules from inside to outside or from outside to inside is through this cell membrane but important thing is that this cell membrane is selectively permeable it is selectively permeable that means it do not allow all the molecules from the cell which are present inside to go outside or the all the molecules which are trying to come in inside it do not allow all the molecules from outside to inside but it is selectively permeable only selective molecule from inside or only selective molecule from outside get allowed through this cell membrane and that's why it is called as selectively permeable ठराविकच मॉलिक्यूल आतून बाहेर किंवा बाहेरून आत अलाउड करण्याचं काम सेल मेंब्रेन करते सगळ्यांना ती अलाउड करत नाही तर ते सगळ्यांना अलाउड करत असेल तर आपण म्हणू शकतो सेल मेंब्रेन इज परमिएबल बट हिअर वी आर युझिंग वर्ड सिलेक्टिव्हली परमिएबल मीन्स इट डू नॉट अलाउ ऑल दी इट डू नॉट अलाउ दी ऑल दी कॉम्पोनंट्स फ्रॉम इनसाईड टू आउटसाईड और आउटसाईड टू इनसाईड in the cell okay so it is called as a selectively permeable and the third function of the cell group membrane is called as it carries out the passive transport then what is mean by passive transport what is mean by passive transport passive transport means there are different type of molecules which are present inside or outside of the cell. There are different type of molecules which are present inside or outside of the cell. They can move from inside to outside or outside to inside without any expenditure of energy. They do not require any energy and such a transport of molecules is called as passive transport. So if this molecule has to transport outside the cell or if this molecule is transported inside the cell, they are passed outside to inside or inside to outside without any help of energy, without any need of energy. Such a transport is called as passive transport and this type of transport is carried out through this cell membrane. So next function of the cell membrane is called the passive transport. Then fourth function of the cell membrane is with the help of the simple diffusion. Then what is mean by simple diffusion? Simple diffusion means there are some neutral solids. What is the mean by neutral solute, solute which has the pH 7 which is called as a neutral pH. So you will know that 1 to 6 pH is called as acidic and above 7 that pH is called as alkaline. But the molecule or the solute which has the 7 pH which is called as a neutral pH and the solute molecule which has the neutral pH is called as neutral solute. 
but there are some pressure molecules which always move with the help of the process and that is called as a simple diffusion and what is mean by simple diffusion the movement of the substance from higher concentration to the lower concentration is called as the simple diffusion higher concentration to lower concentration is called as the simple diffusion so see here if this molecule is very high concentration inside the cell then according to the method of simple diffusion it always move from high concentration to the low concentration because its concentration is higher inside the cell but its concentration is lower outside the cell it is called as the along concentration gradient it is called as along concentration gradient the movement of any molecule from its higher concentration to its lower concentration along the concentration gradient is called as simple diffusion and it is always related to some of the neutral solutes which has a ph 7 so this is the second function of the plasma membrane that is called as the simple diffusion the next function is that the osmosis osmosis is a term related to the water molecule the water molecule if it is present inside the cell or outside the cell and if you want it want to come inside or both outside the movement of this water molecule is called as the osmosis and how water molecule moves outside or inside it always moves from high concentration to the low concentration so water movement is always like the simple diffusion it always move from the higher concentration to the lower concentration so for the this is water molecule which is a high concentration inside the cell it can move from higher concentration to the lower concentration which is present outside the cell so osmosis is the term related to the water and what is osmosis osmosis is a type of simple diffusion where water molecule moves from higher concentration to the lower concentration and so thus osmosis a movement of water from higher to lower concentration is called osmosis and it is carried out through the cell membrane next function is that here we we'll see that there will be facilitated transport facilitated transport means what we have seen that here the lipid bilayer is called as a non polar okay because tail part which are facing towards each other are non polar and outer parts are the polar which we call as a head so there are some molecules okay here we have drawn this diagram there are some molecules which cannot pass through this non polar part because those molecules are polar one polar molecule cannot pass through this cell membrane because the cell membrane is a non polar because it's non polar so coming in contact with the polar point so this polar molecule which cannot easily pass through the cell membrane because the cell membrane is a non polar this polar molecule take the help of some molecule or take the help of some proteins which are present in the cell membrane so here there are some proteins okay what is the role of this protein which are present in the cell membrane this protein allows such a polar molecule which want to come inside the cell this protein molecule help this polar molecule to go inside the cell and that is called as the facilitated transport that is called as the facilitated transport and here what is the important that the polar molecule need a help of some carrier molecule that we call as a protein molecule which carries this polar molecule inside the cell to the cell membrane mhanje ekada tikane ekada gavala jayche se ta apan bus ne jato barobar ek ne ta gavamadhe bus ta lo ta nantar te kai auto rickshaw asta ki kai vehicle asta je apan carrier manto je apnala ta gavamadhe ja tikane pochaycha hai ta tikane nemacha kaam karta 
कशा मॉलिक्यूल आपण कॅरियर म्हणतो कारण ते आपल्याला कॅरी करतात पर्टिक्युलर डेस्टिनेशनला तसं प्रोटीन मॉलिक्युल हे कॅरियर आहे दे आर प्रेजेंट इन द सेल मेंबर अँड वेन एनी पोलार मॉलिक्युल वॉन्ट टू पास इन साईड द सेल दॅट पोलार मॉलिक्युल गोज इन साईड द सेल विथ द हेल्प ऑफ दिस प्रोटीन मॉलिक्युल दॅट साईड दॅट प्रोटीन मॉलिक्युल इज कॉल ॲज कॅरियर प्रोटीन अँड विथ एनी मॉलिक्युल सेम वे गोज आउटसाईड द सेल देन सेम थिंग इज हॅपन दॅट पर्टिक्युलर पोलार मॉलिक्युल गोज आउटसाईड द सेल थ्रू this protein molecule which is acts as a carrier so with the help of protein molecule which is present in the cell membrane transport of that polar molecule inside or outside the cell is carried out it is called as a facilitated transport and the last point is called as the active transport and here see what is active transport that any molecule when pass against the concentration with the help of energy is the need of energy and that energy is given out in the form of atp and the movement is from lower concentration to the higher concentration any molecule when pass from low concentration to high concentration against concentration gradient then that movement is called as active transport here the need there is need of energy atp molecules are required and one example is called as Na plus K plus pump. Na plus K plus pump is a pump of protein which always allows such a molecule inside or outside the cell through the plasma membrane against their concentration that they always move from low concentration to the high concentration. This last part we will discuss in next lecture in detail but see here you have to see these are the functions of the plasma membrane which are very very important. for our need point of view okay students here we will stop this today's lecture the remaining part we will discuss in our next lecture thank you